tell you, our theme music is the best. Everyone, and welcome once again to the show, to the fabulous show. And if you hadn't heard about it, it's called Life Live. Yep, I said it. It's called Life Live. So welcome, and thank you for joining us once again. We have a fabulous show. I say that every time because uh, I'm a little biased. It is fabulous every time. Yes. So we have great guests. We have Wendy, who is a singer, and oh my gosh, she's she's been on The Voice, not The View, but The Voice. <laughs> That's a little inside joke. So, <laughs> but she's a wonderful person, wonderful personality. I mean, love her, love her, love her. And we have Maurice. Hopefully, we get a chance to get him in and joining us because we've been having a little bit of complication with his um, internet. And I forgive me. I think you guys hear my dog barking. In, well, my dog barking in the background is actually my daughter's dog. So I'm dog sitting. She quite not know her manners yet, but that's another story. And we have Lynn. Wait till you guys. Lynn is wonderful. So here's my co-host, my hostess for the mostest, Mr. Gerald C. Anderson. Welcome. Come, 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 come on, Gerald. There you go. <laughs> Gerald, how's that baby doing? How's that baby doing? <laughs> Lord, somebody help her, please. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I have to have fun with everything I do. Did you hear the dog barking and barking? I the heard that dog barking all the way back there. <laughs> she was barking at the birds, I'm sure. She don't know no better. <laughs> you know? Your friend just made a comment. <laughs> yeah, we have Beryl here. Go, hi, Beryl. You see, I got my attitude on Beryl. Beryl is one of our VIP viewers and you know, she just loves out my hats. So mm -hmm. she's like, Tina, where's your hat? So this is for you, Burrow. Just for you, girl. <laughs> so <laughs> anywho, how was your week? How's your week going so um, far? My week is going great, you know. <laughs> Good. How about this you? Is cool. I'm glad it's not cold anymore because you know, Florida been having those cold oh, moments yeah, we, and I haven't been a fan. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm glad it's nice and warm and toasty like Florida is supposed to be. Yeah, there's so, no such thing as cold in Florida. <laughs> uh, so you say. Okay. <laughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> yeah. well, it's been nice and warm up here now. I mean, we was in the 80s a couple of days. So. Yeah, but no. <laughs> <laughs> we, get, we get all of the seasons here. That's the great thing. This is true. Florida. Yeah. I just want to summer and summer again. That's what I want. <laughs> Is that a sex thing? That's not a sex thing, right? No, it's not a sex thing. <laughs> okay. All right. So so I informed everyone about the wonderful guests that we have um, once again. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm excited about this one because I love energy. And you always talk about my, you know, energy. Ah, Tina, okay. And sometimes I'm too loud. Sometimes? I see. This is what I mean. Like, really? <laughs> I can be. You're right. <laughs> but again, you know, I'm I'm excited about the guests that we have. So it's going to be another fabulous show. And thank you again, Burrow, for being the first time, not first time, the first one joining. I love it. Oh, we got Shante. Hey, Shante. We got Shante. So as the you know everyone kind of comes on, we're gonna kind of say hello, right, Gerald? That's right. That's right. Okay. Good. 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 Okay. We got, so we got our okay. behind the scenes guy saying hello to people, Mr. Nicholas. Is that it? Oh yes. <laughs> you want to let him say hi? No, he he's shy. He <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to say hi yet. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> but um, so we have, of course, our. How do I have to think of a like a name for Buff? Because she's just so awesome, and you know, awesome, fantastic, like fabulous is just not quite saying it's strong enough for me. So I got to think of another one for her. But we love her. And she does our positive media moments. So let's go ahead to Buff 
Patterson with our positive media moment. Hey, fam. How y'all doing? Hello, Good. sunshine. I am so excited about life's positive media moment today because you know what? Sometimes we have to go to our past, to realize how powerful, amazing, and inventive we are in order to understand our positive, amazing to our future, right? So today I have Thomas L. Jennings. Do you know who Thomas L. Jennings is? Every black person should know who Thomas L. Jennings is. Do I know? don't know. I'm not ashamed to say okay. I don't. Well, I have no clue. To <laughs> well, he is the first black American to, to have a patent in the United States. <clears throat> he was born in 1791. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Take him a little throat. Take him a little throat. <clears throat> well, he had, uh, um, let me get it together. <clears throat> It's the California weather for me. Mm. <laughs> oh, poor thing. <laughs> is it a hairball? You got a hairball? Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> you need some whiskey? What you need? What you need, girl? I got you. What you need? <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, wait. You should have sent it in the I text know. message. <laughs> <laughs> Let me alcohol in here. Wait. Okay, wait. <laughs> I might need some wine. Well, take okay, your well, time. Take your time, was, darling. Uh, born in 1791 to free parents. He was never a slave. He actually had one of the largest clothing stores in all of New York. He was a tailor and he invented dry cleaning. The dry cleaning method. Oh. The first time ever in mm -hmm. the United States for a black person to have a patent. This man was abolitionist. He was rich and he used all of his money to help and to help black people. And his daughter, actually, as she got older, she was forcibly removed off a, a, um, a rail car. Yeah. He actually, this man had so much money and power that he actually hired one of his counselors, our future presidents, to not, she never was arrested, but to change the laws in New York that they, that black people could ride freely on the rail cars without segregation. And I think it's important for people to realize that our history, New York was not the same as all across the United States. Mm -hmm. um, people were not enslaved in New York. And these people weren't, weren't just business people, they were musicians, musicians and inventors, and they had a lot of power in the United States. And I always say that because I get in arguments with people or discussions with people not understanding the richness of our history mm. and not realizing that <coughs> that people were not just slaves in, in, in the South. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were moving well, and shaking when we got here. Moving mm -hmm. and shaking when we got here. And I think that's so important for us to realize. And Thomas L. Jennings, we cannot forget what he brought to the United States. Wow. Yeah. That's like the Jeffersons. Remember the Jeffersons? Jefferson. He owned he the, yes. he was he owned a dry before. cleaning company. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And um, it made him very wealthy. And we have to understand that. Um, I always say there's a little bit at the top, but those people are hiding in plain sight. So I want to know who's going to be the next patent person of color that's going to change hey, the world. you never know. That's going to change There's the many world. of them out there already. Many of them. In all honesty. Good one, Buff. Go okay. take care of your throat. You got to get you yeah, some tea, got, honey. I'm going through something. I don't know what it was. I think about yes. California. You probably are. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. All for right. That. Thank you, Buff. Appreciate take care of your throat, take honey. Care of yourself. <laughs> yes. That's a good one because remember the Jeffersons? Remember the I mean, Jeffersons. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, he had a dry cleaning company. Yeah. Moving yeah. on up. <laughs> to the well, we don't, let, Wendy, let Wendy do that. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want me to sing it? Yeah, let, let Wendy do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. We could go to commercial then. It's fine. Yeah.
Yes. Make sure everyone likes. Here you go. Likes. I always turn it the wrong way. Likes. Share. <laughs> Wait, this way. There you go. Share. <laughs> and subscribe. What if I spelt that wrong? That would be yeah. so embarrassing. And I'm Ooh. an English teacher. That would be horrible. <laughs> Yeah. But yes, <laughs> you guys like, share, and subscribe to the magazine because we are multimedia and we love to share and just, you know, and, you know, bring everyone. We want to bring everyone to the show if we can. So again, thank you guys that do support us. But those that you are not doing it, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. Hello, Melissa. <laughs> Melissa Adams. Okay. I think that might be a relative of someone. So. <laughs> <laughs> but hello and welcome and thank you for visiting us. So you want to introduce the first guest, Mr. Anderson? So like you, like you saw in that little video clip, I'm sure you saw the page that showed Wendy Moten is, is in our Change Makers uh, issue. Mm -hmm. And she is a, a great and wonderful singer that I had the opportunity to hear. And yes, she was on The Voice. <laughs> See, I wasn't going to tell anyone you messed up, but I mean, hey. <laughs> she was on The Voice, and I had the chance to interview her a few months ago. And so now she's coming to our show. So we're now we're bringing uh, Wendy Moten to life on The Life Live. Yeah. Hey. Hello, Wendy. Oh, Y'all are hilarious. <laughs> I love the show. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you for being uh, being with us tonight. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. In the, in the middle so, of your big schedule, you get you get ready for this concert. <laughs> got this concert, West Palm Beach. You know, wherever I can perform, that's where I go. I know that's right. <laughs> So, Wendy, you told us how that happened. I think you should share that with everyone else that's viewing and watching this because I think it's so interesting how when opportunity knocks, sometimes you just got to take it. And it's like when you least expect it. And I love that story. I love that story. So well, tell everyone you. how you got in West Palm Beach because you weren't supposed to be there. <laughs> I was not supposed to be here this weekend. Um there was is going to be a concert in a couple of days um, at this high school. Students are jazz musicians, and they bring in like the most popular people. Originally, mm. Kenny G was booked for this gig, and he mm. couldn't make it. And somebody said, "What about Wendy Moden?" And I was like, "Uh huh." Now I know, <laughs> I know that I'm two thirds less. <laughs> but it's still a great way. <laughs> it's, it's an opportunity. It's an amazing opportunity. Yeah. I love it. I love that. You just never know when your time comes. You never know. So I love that. Right. So go ahead, Jerry. You had a question. <clears throat> uh, you know, we, we talked about you being on The Voice. <laughs> so, you Wendy, know. you know he's going to keep saying that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you tell us about that experience? Of well, you know, my career started in uh, 1993 during the Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey era. It was Whitney, Mariah Carey, Celine Dion, and I consider myself number four at that time because EMI was looking mm -hmm. for Whitney Houston. Um, and so I did that whole thing. It ended in 1993, so I had to figure out how I was going to eat. I became a background singer, started touring with all, you know, Julio Iglesias, Michael O'Donnell, and Tim and Faith and Country World opened up. COVID hit and everybody was afraid what we were going to do mm -hmm. to get back on track. So I decided I was ready to be a solo artist again, but I was a middle-aged black woman from Memphis. Mm -hmm. How was I going to do it? Not having management, agent, record label. What are you going to do? So I said, I, I need TV. I need television. So I sent a video in from my home. I didn't tell anyone, my husband and my family, friends, nobody. I said, if the voice accepts me, then I know it's the road I need to take. And if they mm. don't, then I gotta figure out another way to make a living because I was ready to be a solo artist again. And I didn't know how I was gonna make that realistically happen. So when the voice said, yes, we want you, I'm like, okay, it's on. So now I need to make it, you know, gather all my ingredients and make it whatever, you know, how I can make it, you know. And so it was the best move I made in a long time. Mm -hmm. That's how I got on. See, and 
Yeah. And I think, again, I just love hearing stories like this because like you stated, you you know, middle-aged, older woman, black woman, just trying to figure it out, trying to, you know, rediscover yourself, you know, in a sense, or reinvent, as they like to say a lot of times. And you found it in you. Why didn't you give up? Why didn't you say, okay, I'm middle-aged, I'm black, I'm, I'm, been there, done it. I mean, these are things that kind of you got to think about. I hate to say, but it is. What made you say, you know what? I'm gonna give it another shot because I got that thing. I well, I knew I had that thing, but I was still full. So it was like, well, I know you're not ready to give it up. So mm -hmm. what are you gonna do? What's realistic? What can you really go after? And I knew I needed TV to fast track this thing. And then I had to ask myself. What can I stomach? Because I'm the generation where you don't talk about yourself. You don't mm. boast about yourself. And the generation we live in now is all about what you did every second of the day. So it's this like, uh, okay, so I had to tell myself, well, once they said yes, then I said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play chess with this game. I'm going to play chess, which is if only John Legend chooses me, I don't know what to do. If nobody <laughs> chooses me, that was the worst nightmare ever. A lot of my long mm -hmm. history, my fear was nobody would turn around on the voice. So I said, okay, if that's my fear, then okay, I, I can live through that. And if John Legend is the only one that turns around, okay, I can live with, through that. But if Blake Shelton turns around, wow. I've been living in Nashville 25 years and I built a wow. whole country music community for the last 25 years. So I said, if Blake picks me, then that just helps me make that foundation even stronger. And that's what I ended oh, up doing, going with Blake. Plus, I knew I wanted to sing older songs, and Blake mm. was not going to to do with me at all, and that was going to be great because I did. Wow, I know that had to be a like a kind of nervous situation, like you know, because you're like, okay, if they like me, this, but if they don't, ugh, what do I do then? You know, so I know yes. that was like a little, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, I yeah. faced yeah. that. Yeah. What what kind of what kind of music is your favorite? Oh my! Okay, so my love for music comes from watching TV. Uh, I memorized the shows from you know Perry Mason and the theme songs. The from Jeffersons, all those shows. no, the Jeffersons, the Jeffersons definitely. You know, good times. All yes. those shows. You know, the the music was sophisticated. And it was mm -hmm. my first year training outside of growing up in church because my dad was a pastor. So we were at church, you know, four days a week. But uh, my love for music came from television and watching all those shows and because they were so sophisticated. And that's my first ear training. And um, I didn't find music as a singer to way later. And oh, um, wow. yeah, I didn't find it to way later when I got my record deal. And I was, like, oh, I was almost 30. They thought I was in my 20s, but no. That's I a good thing. All. I fooled <laughs> them all, but it's been an amazing journey. I just, I, you know, the movie Forrest Gump, I keep mentioning Forrest Gump because I've had these amazing things that happen once. And, mm. you know, it gives me the courage to just keep trying new things. Yeah. And and at least you, you had the wisdom to know that when, you know, these amazing things happen to you one time, God knows, okay, all I got to tell her is one time and she'll get it and run with it. So that's good. Some of us are a little hard headed. Right. <laughs> well, no, I, it, which at, back to the question, um, what's my favorite music? I love like so many different styles that even in my shows, I will at least do four different genres. Okay. Aretha Franklin oh, wow. is my number one. So soul mm -hmm. is going to be my number one for sure. Mm -hmm. But there's so many other things that I love jazz and, you know, everything. Okay. I just good. love it all. Yeah, you know, now you know we can't let you uh, come on here and all and not tell the amazing story that you pushed through on the show on the voice. Mm. How you okay. how you overcame adversity on the voice. Well, I went on the voice, and I know what you're talking about, my arm, but I, I have to share the story. I went on the voice for three reasons to see if I was still competitive, if it still mattered. Mm. Number two, I wanted to be an advocate for people over 50, 50, 60, 70, to put out that message that we still have value and we have mm -hmm. dreams and we should go after those things if we can. Wow. And the third reason was because um, I wanted to see if people 
would receive what I had to offer as an artist, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm not current. You know, and I like singing classics. Are is there an audience out there? And I found out there are millions and millions and millions of people. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's three weeks. The story that, that Gerald wants me to tell is three weeks before the finale. Now, November 22nd, <clears throat> November 22nd, 2021, I turned 57 years old on the show. That's and my birthday. November 22nd. <laughs> Mine too. I well, yeah, you just said you turned for 20. <laughs> <laughs> we got the same birthday. Oh my yes. God. So, That's why we can get it the first time. Right. We yes, get it we know. the first time. So November 22nd, 2021, I turned 57 on the show. November 23rd, the very next day, I fell and broke my elbow in front of six to eight million people on live TV. Oh, so wow. I fell, I fell over this monitor. And I looked mm. over and I was so relieved because my head didn't slam into the floor. Mm. My elbow was broken, but I'm like, hey, that can be fixed. I can fix that. But I can't, mm. you know, my head cracked and that could change my life. So uh, they they uh, took me in this room where this guy was like, wanted to know what they were dealing with. It was like the Sopranos. <laughs> and I was like, listen, I just want my arm fixed. That's why I want to go to the hospital, get my arm fixed. And right. uh, they took me to the emergency room. I uh, finally got a room like a couple of hours later. The show was still going on. Finally got a room. The doctor came in about 5, 6, and 8 a.m. I said, how long do I have before uh, I, you know, I need to fix my, it can't be fixed. He said, you got exactly three weeks. So I asked, they had somebody to come with me and I asked the young lady, well, when is the finale? She said, the finale you, it's in three weeks. I said, okay, I'm staying on the show. And so she called a producer. She wants to stay on the show. I found out that I had, not only did I have a broken elbow on my right side, completely broken. On my right left side, I had a fractured wrist and broken piece of my hand. What? So I'm, yeah, I'm choosing oh to do the show with two broken arms, literally like this. My hands are swollen. My arms are broken. They fly my sister in right away. My sister Mona. Mm. So she can take care of me. I can't do anything. And uh, I was on the set the next day, and when I walked and I walked in the set like this, and and uh, Blake Shelton was like, "It's it's break a leg, not break your arm." Not break. So that's that's, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> wow. I, 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 so I did the last three weeks of The Voice, which is six shows. They do Monday and Tuesday, six shows mm -hmm. with two broken arms. And wardrobe was so beautiful; they just blinged up my splints. They just blinged them up. And mm -hmm. I have to tell you the funny part. The first two nights they were trying to cover up my broken arms. They had me in uh, choir robes. I said, listen, uh, this is the last day for choir robes. I'm rock and roll. I need my black pants and my black clothes. <laughs> so they pull up, uh, you all I need to get by. That's when I first put my black pants back on and put my black clothes wow. on. Wow. Uh, but the thing is, I fell. I got back up. I was on the set the next day with two broken arms, did the show mm. for three weeks with two broken arms. And they used to talk about it. You never complain. I'm like, if I complained about it, then you would want me to go home. And I have mm -hmm. to say my pain level stayed a three the whole time with two broken arms. Wow. I, couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. But it was, it was good is... for me. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying it was good for me because I was like, if I can fall in front of eight million people and it not phase me at all, like I want to embarrass it the next day. I was like, man, I can make my dreams come true. I can just, I can take that Kenny G gig. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you, can take, you can take Kenny G, X, Y, Z. You can take them all. <laughs> all that gig. Because you got to have, some, you know, you got to have something to feel like you can fill those shoes for that. But you, you know. You don't have well, you had like this that. thing called determination and purpose. How about that? Right. So yes. you had that. Right. That so, is awesome. Wow. Wow. So why don't you give us a, a little bit of, of, of what you can do? Oh, what I can do. Well, you me? know, a lot of, oh. a lot of people. Uh, yeah, you too. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, a lot of people love Kirk Whalum. And a lot of people don't know oh, that yes. I sang All I Do on Kirk Raylan's version of that Stevie Wonder song, All I Do. Mm -hmm. He's got a female singing while he's playing. Well, that's me. So I'll just do a little bit of that because huh? that was that was like 1999. That was wow. great. I love so I'll Kirk just do Raylan. a little bit of that. You make my soul a burning fire. 
You're getting to be my one desire. You're getting to be all that matters to me. And let me tell you, boy, I hope and pray each day I live. A little more love I have to give. A little more love that's devoted and true. Because all I do is think about you. All right. I love it. You. All right. Yeah. I told you she was good, didn't I tell you? <laughs> She's a change maker. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Yes. Woo. Baby. So that's 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 a great thing. And plus that was that's an amazing story. I think I think a lot of people need this, you know, you eight million people, you fall in front of them, but you get right back up. Well, not mm-hmm. right, you got up and you push right through for the next three weeks, singing and, and staying in the competition, staying in the game. You know, a lot of us would have quit. We did we fell down like that, we'd have quit and we gave up, you know, but you didn't. So you're an inspiration to a lot of people. Amen. That is the truth. That is the truth. Well, y'all are too, by the way. I feel inspired by both of you. Just, I just Aww. love your beautiful energy and and what your purpose, what you're doing. Love Aww. it. Well, thank, thank you. you. We, we appreciate, appreciate that. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to say good night now, and then I know you got this. Get ready for your big show tomorrow. It's yeah, tomorrow, she has rehearsal right? tonight. Rehearsal tomorrow, tonight. Is, they're tomorrow. doing a whole dress rehearsal because they have cameras and everything. This school is, it's it, it's West Palm Beach. That's they amazing. Yeah, yeah, great school. I love, I, love, I, love, yeah, I love West Palm Beach. So I know you're yes. gonna give, give a great performance. So absolutely, we'll, we'll be thinking about you. Thank you. And that nice Appreciate warm that. beach weather down there. <laughs> I'm right in front of the beach, I'm right outside my door. Yeah, <laughs> she's got the good weather. West Palm. Yeah. All right. Yes. All right. Well, have a good evening, Wendy. Thank, thank you, you so you much, you Wendy. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. Alrighty. Yes. Bye-bye. Thank you. Oh, that is like amazing. You know, and I think Les Brown was the one that said, "If you fall down, if you can look up, you can get up." And like, that's a prime example of that analogy. So I love that. Love it. Two broken arms and still, you know, that's Man, amazing. I know if I broke a nail, I would be like, uh-uh, we got to get this fixed. <laughs> I'd be like, uh-uh, sister girl can't do this. No. I, I think, I, Nick, I think we're at commercial time here. Yeah. Have you always and- dreamed of writing a book? but you're not sure where to start. Or maybe you've already written a book, but you don't know how to get it published? Don't worry, you're not alone. Self-publishing can be daunting, but it doesn't have to be. That's where Life Publishing comes in. We're a full-service self-publishing company that can help you every step of the way, from formatting to distribution. We can even point you in the right direction for editing and marketing your book. With Life Publishing, you can finally share your story with the world. We'll work with you to create a book that you're proud of, and we'll help you get it in front of readers. So what are you waiting for? Start your self-publishing journey today with Life Publishing. Visit our website or give us a call to learn more. What are they waiting for? Come on, publish that book. We said, we're waiting for you. Come on in. <laughs> we just waiting. We waiting. Well, you wait, I don't have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so we have some more viewers. We have, oh, Miss, oh, wait, I just got a bunch of pop-ups on my laptop that just freaked me out. <laughs> That's that AI stuff. That stuff is spooky. <laughs> I don't yeah. like that. But we got Dr. V. We got Melissa. I think I mentioned with this. Dr. Dr. Oh, Melissa. V. Did you say Dr. V? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dr. V. You, she's not Anderson yet, so <laughs> soon and very soon. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but of course we have Miss um, Pat B. I'm not sure who that is, but thank you and welcome, welcome. And Nikki, we have Nikki. Thank you for joining us, Dwayne. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We appreciate it. And you guys, I mean, let. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to, you know, send them through. We'll post them on the screen so that our guests can um, answer your questions that or your or 
you know, appreciate your comments that you make because they do love them. And um, showing the interaction does show that you, you know, a, a level of support. So um, feel free to shoot questions or comments. Mm -hmm. We appreciate them all. Right, Daryl? That's right. I'm not doing all that, though, but that's right. You like it? You like that? <laughs> <laughs> so let's not let's not let the stop, uh, singing stop because we got another singer dance. Let's go for it. Oh. I'm I'm waiting for this one. Uh, I remember correctly, he's from Chicago, Illinois. So he's in our latest issue, the spring issue, with with the whispers on the cover. By the way, so mm. uh, that will be coming out soon. So y'all can pre-order that now from LivePublishing.net. But let's bring on this to the stage, Mr. Maurice Christian. Hello, Mr. Christian. Can you hear us? You can yeah. hear us? I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. That was my crowd noise right there. I love it. That okay, great, great. great. I can see you too. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. I like that. We got to do that again and record that, Gerald. We need that. <laughs> Well, I was I was just really Let's hoping that he that, that we could hear him and sing because so, so you wouldn't sing. So. <laughs> See, just be hating. You be hating. <laughs> so how you doing this evening? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was giving me some trouble. It was just buffering, you know. Mm -hmm. Like Tina said, that I I uh, AI stuff going on. I guess you know. Yeah, yeah. that stuff is scary. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, well, you got your your start. Uh, you're from Chicago, right? But I watched that episode, Wendy. Mo I saw the. I watched oh. It. oh, yeah. Oh, okay. He's so, he's like yes, still going in and out. I think that's mm -hmm. right. That's right. And so, just how, can you tell us how you got your start? In and out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell, tell us how you got started yeah. in the in It's kind of happening world. on this end, too, going in and out as well. Well, for, as far as the dancing world, I got started in high school. I was about 15, 16 years old and ran into some guys that was already uh, forming a group called the Puppets in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And they would head down. Yeah. So by my junior year in high school, they would head down to the Board of Trade building because that's where they were filming Soul Train. So Joel Train was oh. down there at the board trade building. And I happened to move into the neighborhood on the west side of Chicago, one house down from one of the members who was already going to Soul Train. And he asked me to go along with him. So I got there, mm. I saw these guys there dancing. And it was the day that Donna Summers I was guest starring on there. Oh, so I got wow. to meet her down there. So I saw these guys doing this kind of dance. It's almost like hip hop, you know, dance today, but a little different. And uh, I, I was like, wow, look at these guys. I said, what are they doing over there? And I was seeing the hands moving, the points and the knee drops and everything. I'm like, wow. So I was, um, I, got, I got to know these guys. And they say, hey, well, you know, we're going to be looking for some new members. <clears throat> I happen to join. So when I joined them, I learned how to do all this dancing, what was called locking them. Oh, wow. So that yeah, was the title of the being. dance, locking, what we wore to suspend on. And, and everything was bright colors, many bright colors. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what we were. So it was in Chicago, and we got to do that. Uh, one day, they were taping Midnight Special. You know, I was produced by Bert Sugarman. And Wolfman Jack hosted that show. And it would come on at midnight where they had major stars, Ohio players, I mean, you name it. They were on that show. We mm -hmm. snuck, it was at the uh, University of Chicago. In Chicago. And we saw Wolfman Jack and his man. So they ran across them and uh, we said, um, they say, hey, look at these guys. So and they said, hey, what do you guys do? You dance? Let me see your routine. So we showed him a little routine. He liked it. 
And he said, hey, listen, I want you guys to come on my tour. He said, would you come on my tour? And say, yeah. So Tim Fordham right now, Wolf. So what we'll do, we'll take their information and then we'll give them a call. But it was almost a year when they, until we got that call back. So when we got that call, of course, we were ecstatic. We went on shake us to Canada. But we went a lot, a lot of the states too. You know, Texas, uh, New York. We went to a lot of different states. <clears throat> Arizona to do a lot of uh, performing there because they had this road show that we were on. And we did Nosberry Farm here in California. We also did that in October, around Halloween, that is big, but we did that. And now that was about an eight year journey experience uh, traveling with Wolf Magic Jack. Wow, eight years. Later, That's they got assigned time. to MCA record label and we dancers. And until this day, I think we're the only dancer, dance group that was signed. The signal is going out pretty fast. For major record label as well. That follow that. Okay. Uh, can you still hear me now? It's it's going, it's breaking up quite a bit. Um, but in, we're getting it in pieces. So I keep talking and hopefully. I didn't catch that. Yeah, you, you're, you're, you're breaking up though. We can't. We can't. I think he might be frozen. Uh, I think he might have froze up. Yeah. Okay, it's still breaking up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's I, breaking I, I, up and you're freezing. Hopefully. Okay. Now I can. Still yeah, breaking up. You can up. hear us fine, right? You hear us fine. Yeah. Yeah, you, 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 I guess it's doing the, the it's buffering on your end, bro. It's, it's like you're freezing on our end. Yeah, but uh, we're hearing it in pieces, uh, so we're putting it together like a puzzle. Yes, I'm <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's just up. moving different parts. Like both of you are gone now, <laughs> and I'm here, and then sometimes uh, you guys pop out and then. So I yeah, don't know I if it's on my end or what. Where are you located? Not that that will help. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Can you hear now? We can hear you yeah. when you're here. <laughs> In my. <laughs> and it sounds like you're you're getting a, a delay from us when we when we're talking. You, it's delayed. Yeah, I'm in my house. Married to my modem. <laughs> <laughs> Because the, the story yeah, is so it's, great. It's delayed and, and it gets it. And it's after, sometimes you guys pop out. Yeah, because yeah, we have what Kathy Carter Smith that just made a statement. Yeah, about, and I would hate for um, people to miss it. The listeners nice is a very interesting story. Uh, Shirley, we met woman and got um, mm -hmm. signed the MCA record label. Yeah, it's a very interesting story. And I'm and I'm very intrigued. Okay. So I missed that question. <laughs> yeah, we can't. We, we, yeah, we can't. We can't. We we can't hear you. You know. Yeah, it's hard to kind of. Okay. <laughs> so we we're, we're, we're gonna oh, have to go on. <laughs> yeah, you're freezing up pretty bad. Yeah. yeah, you're freezing up pretty yeah. bad. Yeah, we're gonna have to. We're, maybe we can, we can, we can see if we can get you back okay. at the end. Yeah. You want to oh that? wow. Oh. If you can get it working, it's it's still, it's still delaying real bad. So. I think he's like me a couple of weeks ago when I was like, yeah, pocket, you know, going in and out. <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We have we have some of <clears throat> viewers saying that they were listening to your story and they love the story. They 
does sound like a great story. But everything but seems fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're just going to have to have you again, have you on again, Maurice. How about that? Yeah, hard that sounds like a good idea. So, <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll have to get with Desiree and get you get you back on again. How about that? Yeah, definitely. That sounds great to me. Okay. okay. Well, thanks for trying, okay? Yeah, thank you for trying, and we sounds appreciate the me. effort. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thanks. Thank you for you guys. And next time we'll get to hear right. the story. Because yes, we have to hear the story. <laughs> right. All right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay. Uh, I wish we were able to hear it. That was kind of good. So if you, it, it, his story is going to be in the spring issue of, of our magazine, which the digital version is currently out. So you can you can we're gonna drop the link in about the with the, that has the digital version. That you can uh, yes. subscribe and get the digital version, and the printed copy. You, yeah, you got to talk. Bring that pitch down some a little bit, <laughs> so so people can hear you. <laughs> you get too yes. high up there, and we can't yes. hear you. Yes, subscribe. <laughs> That's all we need to do, right, Jen? <laughs> Get excited, so my my it goes up a little bit. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it goes up. He's like, it's so excited and like, but yeah, he was. He, I mean, his his story is absolutely. Great. His story is great, you know. You know? And I'm not just saying that because I wrote it in the magazine, but his story is. Yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, but it it is. I mean, with just with him telling it is much more interesting, um, right. as well. So I love right. it. So, right. um, oh, somebody cooking something good. Sorry, that distracted me. Lord have mercy. <laughs> I, think, I, I think we're going to have to get Nick to take us to another commercial. <laughs> yes, let's hit the commercial. Let's go for it, Nick. Anything now, Nick? Hello, I'm Gwyneth Albright, your Waffle Queen. And welcome. Hello, I'm Gwyneth Albright, your Waffle Queen. And welcome to my kitchen. But now I'd like to invite you to join an even larger and more exclusive kitchen, Cooking with Glennis's Kitchen Masterclass. Our masterclass group isn't just a Facebook group. It's a vibrant, supportive community designed for cooking enthusiasts. Here, you'll gain access to a treasure trove of unique, easy to prepare recipes exclusive to our group members. Join me in streaming and live cooking classes where you will learn all of my culinary techniques and I will answer all of your burning questions. You won't be learning from just any chef. You'll be learning from Glennis Albright, a celebrity chef known worldwide as the Waffle Queen. With over 25 years of experience creating foods for people with health challenges, Glennis brings a wealth of knowledge and passion to the table. You'll be able to participate in fun cooking challenges and contests, enjoy special discounts, and you'll get tips about which appliances, utensils, and products to buy. With Cooking with Glennis's Kitchen, you're not just joining a group. You're becoming part of a family of cooks who learn, grow, and support each other. There will be surprise guests, too. So why wait? Join Cooking with Glennis's Kitchen Masterclass Group today and start your journey to faster, healthier, tastier cooking. I can't wait to welcome you into the GK Tribe. Yeah, some products are so good. Some I know. <laughs> I know you know they're, they're being sold on Amazon now too, right? Oh, really? Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's and that, and that master class, you know, she's got the master class going. So, Glennis is rising up, and it couldn't happen to yes, a, a person, a nicer person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, great, great person. All right, mm -hmm. so we have Miss Lynn up next. Well, I am full of energy. <laughs> Lynn Adams King, so uh, former private investigator, has her has a <laughs> dance show. 
<laughs> that she's gonna talk about it. That she's a, she's a great storyteller. It's, and she, you're just gonna love her energy. <laughs> Let's just put it oh, that way. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yes, and her smile, guys. Oh my goodness! Her smile is just—it's. I love her smile. She's a beautiful All right. person. We gotta wait till she come back to this group because she's not here yet. So we well, gotta not <laughs> I know she had to, she had to have something in store for her. <laughs> what is, are you in a merry-go-round or something? <laughs> hey, I'm here. Ooh. I'm breaking in a new pair of skates. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Round the kitchen. Woo. I love it. Sorry, now, man. I've been in here purling. <laughs> wow. Hello, my dear. <laughs> oh, oh my November goodness. Here? I am November 23rd, baby. Give it See, up. See, we have this energy about us. It's all about November, baby. November, baby. <laughs> See, you I can know do that dance. Kind. Yeah. You know, I kind. Love, yeah. <laughs> well, I know oh, what yeah. okay. <laughs> So, man, look, I had to come with a gimmick because I didn't know I, I was going to be on there with all these smart people. So, you know, <laughs> like, you know, the other TV show where you got to come with a gimmick, you know, so that you go ahead and level that playing field. I'm like, oh, man, where are my skates? I got to do something. <laughs> Smart. Like, let me roll up on them like this. Literally roll up on them. <laughs> well, we, we can definitely say we've never had that happen before. That was, I love that. Almost a year into this show, with 20 some 20 some episodes. We've never had that happen before. <laughs> Hey, first time for everything. First <laughs> of many firsts with me, okay? <laughs> well, hi. Thank y'all for having me. Yeah, thank you for joining us. You know? Yeah. Exactly. yeah no, for those who don't so, know, Lynn, Lynn is also in the latest uh, issue of the magazine. Uh -huh. It's out right now. So you can click that link and go on over there and you can either, either subscribe to the digital or purchase the printed copies. And there's yeah. that little sign again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm going to spread the word. I got a lot of my people on here. So some yeah. of the names that you called out, family well, members you called out. Adam kind of gave it away. You know, we yeah. kind of figured that out. Yes. <laughs> uh, my studio and I love it. Yes. Miss yeah. Melissa. Oh, yeah. Honey, Robert said, get your roll on. He saw me skate my way through. <laughs> yes. That was the entry. That was all. Awesome. I love that entry. <laughs> People are going to play back this video just to see that. <laughs> Y'all see how she just rolled through there? <laughs> hey, look, my life was on the line because these are brand new skates. Any skater knows that's the scariest time in your entire life. When you break in a new pair of skates and look at him, I'm 57 <laughs> and I've had the same pair of skates probably since I was 17 years old. So wow. those have been roll hard and put away wet. And um, I love it. I love it. I love it. But also one of the things that's on the agenda for Studio 5.0 for all my skaters out there, we're going to have a skate jam on Studio 5.0 for skate dancers. We're going right. to do, do that. Stay tuned. You're going to watch? <laughs> <laughs> Wendy going to watch too. We ain't having her breaking three different things and limbs. <laughs> we'll be the cheerleaders. Me and Wendy will be the cheerleaders. But yeah. you know Wendy will push like, through. Yes, girl. Yes. <laughs> she'll get up and she'll push right on through. Mm -mm. I need Wendy to have pushed through everything she needed to push through already. Yes, she's, she's doing through. it. Yeah, she's doing it. That girl can so, sing. So share, share. Tell everyone what it is you do. And wait, let's start with the private investigator. Yeah, I was going to say, let's I mean, go back to the private I've investigator seen, days. Yeah, I've seen some Woo, you don't have enough. They used to hold a badge up. They all look like <laughs> you, Miss Lynn. Private. Remember? Private is the opposite. Yeah, but you're a pretty, you're a pretty private 
indicated those. Well, like, that's oh, why I get the goods because you have no <laughs> idea that that's what I'm doing, baby. I hide in plain sight. I ain't got time to be climbing trees and jumping on roofs. I'm right there across the street from you, acting like my tire is flat or my car won't start. No, <laughs> baby, go ahead on. I see you. And actually, probably one of my friends on here, Marvin, he's the one that got me started in private investigations back in the 80s. And late eight, no, um, no, what did I say? 80s? Good Lord. Hold on. <laughs> my friend Marvin, I think, is on here. And he's the one that got me started in private investigations in the late 90s. Mm. Okay, now we're back on track. So, um, but yeah, I actually got licensed. I was doing freelancing, you know, kind of um, like an apprentice um, because he was a trainer. And <clears throat> that kind of got my chops kind of, you know, wet over, okay, I think I do want to pursue this and um, got licensed and um, started spying on people, you know, um, stalking people legally or closely following people, however you want to term it. But I like all of those. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did insurance fraud and that is for people that go to the, to the doctor and then they forget or they when they come out, they take the neck brace off and throw it in the trunk of the car and then you catch it all. <laughs> oh the cheating spouses, you know, the old run of the mill PI stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but my last... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead, Tina. What are you saying? No, I was going to say, and fast forward, now you're like this, you know, dancer... <laughs> Well, hold on. Let's bookmark that for just a minute. Yeah. Because <laughs> just before I made this sharp right, right turn, I was a death investigator for the mm. medical examiner's office. So that should have been a show um, because a lot of people don't know, don't know what the Emmy's office does. And so mm. we're the ones, the police, nobody is allowed to touch the body until the medical examiner's office shows up. And so we're the ones that make the pronouncement of death. We, you know, check the body. We have to look in the eyes and in the nose and the mouth. And, you know, we see all kind of gross stuff. You know, you roll a body over and some sounds come out that you wasn't okay. expecting and that'll clear the room. <laughs> I've seen police officers run for their lives. <laughs> They're like, how do you do this? I don't know. I I, I don't know. I, I woke up in a cold sweat the night before I started. I was terrified because uh, I didn't know that I could really do it. And I was I, I really was cut out for it. It's the craziest thing to say. And did I tell y'all they had the nerve to fire me? Oh, you should have rolled over with them skates. You told me. You told me that. <laughs> if I had put on my roller skates, it would hey, it'd have been on. <laughs> it fired me. <laughs> so Candy has a question. Candy made a statement here. And what'd she say? Don't forget. The HOA board. Okay. That's one of my concepts also. And it did see, I got a whole slate of projects. In addition to Studio 5.0, the next pilot we're going to shoot is called HOA Court. And that's when people just get to come in. Hey, Desiree. People just get to come into my courtroom and bitch about their HOA. Everybody, everybody hates so. their HOA. They hate it. Yeah, that's yeah. It. The board members hate each other. They hate <laughs> the people. The people hate them. They hate the, the people hate the community manager, the community. Anyway, it's just that it's would a, be interesting. Says pull hate. I, I watch it. Yeah, so I just give an opportunity for people to come in the courtroom and um, you know just talk about it. Let's talk about it. So I've been sending yes. out smoke signals to Chris Tucker. I keep showing up on his timeline saying Dream Big Productions is looking for you. Because I, <laughs> I would, he would be cool to host HOA. Because it's all for comedy. It's not, it's not real. Right, it's, right, it's, right. But it gives people an opportunity to vent about their frustrations. 
So yeah, they would, they would vent a lot for sure. Oh yeah, they have been a lot. Oh, I got so much material, baby. And for so on my friends. board for four years, I was like a prisoner ticking off the marks till I could walk into the sunlight again. It was horrible. Well, tell us about Dream Big Productions. Dream Big Productions. So I got Dream Big Productions, Dream Big Angel Network, and now Dream Big Entertainment. So why? Because I dream big. You know, I don't have time for small dreams. I just, that's a waste of my time. So Dream mm -hmm. Big Productions is, I, once I, when I got fired and, you know, got over myself and um, stopped licking my wounds, I just decided to start this company. I started it in July, um, technically September, because I was waiting on the name to come available. And I started shooting shows in October. I have oh, wow. zero TV experience to speak of. Well, I'm not gonna say zero. Remember I told you about the gymnasium in Columbus, Ohio? I decided Columbus, Ohio needed a live studio audience TV talk show. So I figured I was gonna be Oprah of Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> so, but let me tell you how far I took this. I love it, I love um, it. So, I went to the community center and asked them, could I use their gym? They were like, okay, yeah, whatever, girl. So then somebody had told me about Access TV. So I went to the Access station and said, what do I have to do to start a show? So I ended up coming out of there with um, a director, a producer, and three camera people, and an editor. And I just started advertising and shooting shows. And I wanted to be Oprah so bad. Uh, and I just told this story today. I haven't told it in years. I, I, I literally arranged for a lady on the show who was having a really, really, really tough time. She only had $2,000 and I was working selling cars at the time. And I arranged with the management of our dealership to take her $2,000 and they gave her a car that was worth somewhere between eight and $9,000 and they donated that car to her. So that, that was pretty epic. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Cause Oprah did it and everybody was crying and yeah. you know, I wanted that experience. Yes. That's, that's nice. That's you have, you have a question on the screen? Yeah, what was, what was my production? first production? So if you if you count LA Live in the gymnasium at the community center, the LA Live show, that's how I got the moniker LA. I was Lynn Adams at the time. That's how I became LA. And so I moved out here and did it until life started lifing and I just couldn't do it anymore. But then when I had all this open landscape in front of me, now I've been in pre-production for Studio 5.0 back in 2019. And so it's 5.0 because you have to be 50 years of age or older to dance on my show. This ain't for the babies. Now I used to be able to say, ain't no twerking going on here, but um, <laughs> what had happened was, <laughs> Well, that ever was. There's some and if you could do them on skates, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> oh yes, and then twerking on skates. Oh, anyway, but anyway. <laughs> so anyway, we. <laughs> but see, I knew I was on to something because back in 2019 was when ABC started teasing the Golden Bachelor. So I was like, yeah, I know they listening to me. They following what I'm doing. I'm Look, I'm not following them. ABC is, is eavesdropping on what I'm doing, but okay. Anyway, so of course the tsunami hit and washed everything off the table. So when I found myself with all this open landscape again, I knew I had been green lighted by the most high. Once you get that green light, baby, oh. baby. <laughs> we seen that ain't no stopping us now. <laughs> on the move. Okay, so yeah, I think all right, yeah. So Tina Marie and Wendy, they're the only ones that get the <laughs> I got it. in LA. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I got here. So 50 year olds have to audition to get on the show though, right? Oh yeah. And it's funny. So I don't pre-screen anybody. Everybody watches the auditions all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it's funny I think that's so it is, yeah, it, because we don't know what we're going to get. There's still some scrubbing the ground and mm -hmm. then there's some 
roboting, and then there's some doing <laughs> some other stuff that I'm not quite familiar with. Some but- people still doing a robot. Oh yeah. Oh, my girl Linda Husser, man, that girl can bust a robot like the best of them. That and drop it. Oh, and I think Linda's what? Uh, maybe sixty. The girl bad. Oh, the girl that's, that's, bad. That's, that's, okay. that's, that's, oh yeah. That's but it's the kind of show that when I was at the Emmy's office, and this is this is real deal here. I really felt like I was in ministry. I felt like. God gave me these people's heart in my hand at the, some of them, the absolute worst day of their entire life. And I took that very seriously. And that was another reason it hurt so bad to be so unceremoniously dropped Uh out the door like I was, but that's a whole other topic. But I feel like this is ministry as well, because when you hear people that had that fantasy or they used to sit like this watching Soul Train and I almost couldn't even imagine themselves because the dream was so far out there. And you got a producer that comes along and tap them on the shoulder at this age in life. Oh, goodness. I got a spot for you. When I mean, when you see people like with tears in their eyes saying this was a dream come true and I haven't even gotten started yet. I mean, it just it it it's it is like I look like the the first the last production we did. I looked like I was thoroughly intoxicated because I was crying and I was going around. I love you, and I was hugging everybody, and I was sobbing. <laughs> they knew like, you meant it. They knew you meant it. <laughs> but I was <laughs> literally though. I was so overcome with emotion that this vision that has been in my head for so long is now the baby is out kicking and screaming and crying when I was pregnant for like 20 years and finally Lord, I can't take it anymore. Oh, y'all can hear the dramatics. Oh, yeah, y'all can tell I'm dramatic. Lord, just abort these babies. I can't take it anymore. Now y'all see why we saved her for last, right? Ending with a bang. Ending with a bang. I say. And speaking of, I'm literally supposed to be on a set right now, but I am here with you guys. And well, you're on a set. You're on the set. I know. Right? Talk about a girl with her priorities in order. Definitely. I'm gonna roller skate up in on that set. And like, we're gonna forget all about I wasn't there on time. I love it. I love it. So it's definitely self, just self-explanatory as far as that your passion for it. And what I'm seeing is that you're doing it not only for yourself, but you're doing it for others. And where does that come from? Why do you feel like, I won't say your responsibility, but your responsibility. Like, where's that coming from? I think that... um You know, I wrote on LinkedIn not too long ago of be careful, something to the effect of be careful how you treat the little guy, um, the, the raft you, you, the raft you poke a hole in today might be the one you need later. So it was something to that effect because I've been that person, um, you know, Dream Big Angel Network is my 501c3. And we do one event a year. And it's a big Christmas extravaganza. And they're, oh, thank you, baby sis. She said I look so pretty. But the reason it's one event a year is because I had horrible memories of growing up at Christmas. My mother was an alcoholic and she was abusive to all of her children. And it was especially worse at holidays. Now, as I grew up and I understood that she had the pressure, all the weight on her shoulders of these kids looking at her to provide something she was not capable of providing. And 
it caused me to reconcile with my mother later in life. But because of those memories, and it took a lot of counseling and a lot of years of um, trying to rewrite history for myself. Mm -hmm. So I really believe depression is this fixation on self. So I set about the task of focusing on other people to chase those demons away. And that's how I got started. Nobody knew the hundreds and thousands of dollars every year, quietly in the corner, I would find families to sponsor. Wow. And that is what caused me to, um, it helped to heal me. And I didn't get on paper as a 501c3 until 2000, 2017, but I had already been doing this for a decade before then. And, um, but because of those horrible memories, because of growing up poor and being looked down upon, I always have this, I'm an empath. So I just have a heart for people who are marginalized and uh -huh. people who thought that life had passed them by. And uh -huh. I feel like it's an honor of God to be able to tap somebody on the shoulder and say, I have an opportunity for you, baby. It's not over. Uh -huh. Get, wow. it. get right. it together and get on this dance floor. I, you don't have to be the best dancer. I'm not looking for professional dancers. It, it, people have qualities about them that make them special. And I just, uh, I've, I, I'm just a vehicle to be able to pull that out and let people know it's, it's not over. It's not over. All right. I love it. Absolutely love it. I'm Thank a true you. believer that all people ever want to know and feel is that they matter. They it's matter. Yes. <laughs> and when a lady it's said to me, she said, I'm back. Now, I don't know where she was, but the fact she said she was back. And one lady just had lost her husband earlier in 2023. Being able to dance and party, you know, it brought life back into Becky. And uh, that is so beautiful, Lynn. And mm. so blessed to be able to do. People say, well, how are you going to fill Don Cornelia's shoes? That's not my job. I'm not filling right. Don Cornelia's shoes. That's not my job. We're Studio 5.0 for a time such as this. He is cemented in history. Nobody mm -hmm. will ever fill those shoes. That's right. You want to hear from our guy that was on Soul Train. Mm -hmm. Yes! I right. want to hear that story. <laughs> That's why we have to have him on again. Yeah, because yeah, we yeah. all are Soul Train. I mean, Right. Yeah. Right. That's like the Jeffersons. Right. Exactly. You think I'm looking at the Jeffersons. That's your, that's your jam, isn't it? So yeah. like, one more thing. I just want to get one more thing out before we go. Dream Big Entertainment. So I've now crossed over into officially I am a concert promoter. And my first act, woo wait, I think I'm probably going, I'm sorry, I got a dysfunctional cat. Um, is, um <laughs> I am a loose ends groupie. Mm. Loose ends, hanging on a string, hold down, you. stay a little while, chow. I, that is my first concert I'm promoting. I will probably <laughs> be on a drip at Grady Hospital while y'all pop <laughs> All right. I can't, I can't believe it. But my dude, my, um, my friend out in LA, um, um, uh, Clifton Mosley, he's probably on here. He 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 just yeah, dropped he, that bomb. He just dropped that bomb right in my lap. So mm -hmm. I, this is my season. This is all my right. time. All the years I prayed, fasted, sowed those seeds. God said the harvest is here, but he's still gonna pour right. me to work. I didn't get to win the million billion dollar jackpot. He said you still gonna work. You still gonna pick that harvest, but it is here. <laughs> gonna pick it. All right. <laughs> Well, we, we appreciate you being on tonight. So, you know, if, if you want to know more about Lynn's story, you got to go and get that magazine. Yes. Yes. <laughs> get that I magazine. Every copy, every digital <laughs> copy. Get them and, all. In case you missed it, there's the link again. So, make sure you go get that magazine. Get that. Read magazine. Lynn's story and all the other stories. They have to do 
Gerald? They have to, to, to subscribe to get the digital. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so look, I'm on Instagram Studio 5.0 TV. That's 5.0 TV. Mm-hmm. Dream Big Productions LLC on Facebook, and also we have Studio 5.0 fa- Dance t- TV Dance Show Fan Page on Facebook. Oh, wow. so you guys, hit us up. Hit us up because we right. get ready to resume. Yeah. We get ready to resume shooting. For Studio 5.0 and Lucian's is coming up here in Atlanta on May 30th. All right. <laughs> Don't leave me hanging on the string. Y'all better come on. <laughs> Say a little wow, child. <laughs> All right. Love well, thank it. you so I'm much, man. All right, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> we'll, no, we'll appreciate you. Are you going to skate out? <laughs> uh, Don't make me. <laughs> Okay. Ooh, that almost didn't work out. All right. All right. Have a good evening. Thank you for having me. So you guys are so much fun. Thank you. Five point oh studio. Absolutely. Bye. Bye bye. Oh my goodness. Love, love, love me some Miss Wynn now. Oh my goodness. Yeah. She, she's, she's great, isn't she? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'm all about energy. Did, I did, can't did, always did. be the craziest girl in the room. I can't be. <laughs> <laughs> But I like I like I, I like the theme tonight. You know, we had Wendy who overcame her injuries to oh finish. Then we had Lynn who overcame be, being fired. To, to look at her now, you know, <laughs> about to have about to be a constant promoter, you know, get loose ends and all. And what what we didn't hear was Maurice also had, had an overcoming moment in his life too. So I want to give it away because we're gonna have him back on the stage so he can tell you exactly what that is. But the tonight show is all about overcoming. If you if you're in a position right now where you think. Your the things are, are at an end for you. It's not. You can pick it up. It ain't over. It ain't over. It ain't over. <laughs> you see, these people oh, have, have picked it up and they they got right back out there and now they're bigger than what they were. So, absolutely, never give up. Never ever. I think that's the song too. Never <laughs> gonna quit. Just ain't stick. Oh, have mercy. Oh, my God. That's why my mama played with music. I know all the songs. Me yeah. and my sister, she always play all her music. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> my sister Monique is on here. Hey, Mom. Oh, that's your sister? Yeah, Monique, that's my sister. <laughs> and we got uh, Rob. Oh, Rolanda. We got, I can't, I need to put my other glasses on. Well, it's, it's, it's a whole lot of people, so. <laughs> All right, we gotta acknowledge everyone. Oh my gosh, Dwayne. You got oh my god, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, thank you guys so much. Desiree, hey Desiree. Desiree, the best PR in the world, huh? She is like the best, yeah. the best, the best. Desiree. So we would be remiss without thanking uh thanking the Desiree because two of her clients were here tonight. So exactly. we had a well, although we didn't get to get to finish hearing Maurice's story, but we'll have we'll get with Desiree and get him back on. But um, mm-hmm. also, Lynn is is Desiree's client too. So yes, yes. Desiree for for guiding them to us. Yeah, she's a great supporter of us, and I love it. I just think it's so great. So right. yeah. awesome. So yeah. thank you, Ernest, Candy, and Melissa, Dwayne, Rolanda, Rolanda, maybe it's Rolanda. But thank you guys. Thank you everyone for joining us. Thank mm. you. Thank you, Carissa. Oh, we got Carissa and Melissa. Carissa mm-hmm. and Melissa. Did no. I say that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank, 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 thank you, everyone for joining us. And um, I think it's now it's time for us to eat. Yeah, but don't forget uh, the next show will be on May first. Oh gonna be- yes. Anything you want to know about cryptocurrency, be here so Dr. Courtney Morgan, who's also who's on the cover of the Change Makers, will be talking to you about that. And he has his own 
cryptocurrency. So, uh, and then, then we have singer, another Desiree client, a singer, Philip Brandon will be with us. And the singer, so, uh, songwriter, actress, who is also on the cover of one of our magazines, Tyler J will be joining us. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. I like her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had so many people on the magazine and in the magazine. It's like, I mean, we can't even remember them all. But, yeah. I mean, it's wonderful that we now get to interview them live on the show. So right. I think this is awesome. So, right. you know, again, thank you, everyone who has been supporting us all these years. One, it has exactly. been easy, but, you know, we definitely know we have not been able to do this on our own if it wasn't for all of you all, you know? Exactly. So we definitely appreciate it. So. But don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> Just Subscribe. <saying. laughs> Subscribe, yep. All right. All right. Now it's time to say goodbye.